But, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, like I said, I'm a huge geek to this. I'm obsessed with it. I'm on the Internet constantly, at least not, if not for just an hour a day, just checking cocktail forums and new little websites and whatnot and reading every vintage material I can get on, just studying the classics, but also the newer trends that are going on. All right. I promise we wouldn't keep you long. I, I want to do a whole hour with you when we get back to town. Come in. We'll make a little drink in the studio. We'll mix things up together. We can talk about your philosophy of balance. You can talk about your philosophy of flavor. You can tell me why a drink made by you isn't going to taste like a drink made by anybody else and how when you make the classics, you make them your own somehow. And, and I'm really eager to find out all those things about you because I've heard a lot of great things from the people that I know and respect that have been paying attention to what you've been doing. So there's a great buzz about what you're doing. And I can't wait till we get back to Tucson. But before I do that, for people who will want to come and see you and congratulate you in the next couple of weeks, where are you going to be making drinks in Tucson? Yeah, that is a very good question right now. Honestly, the next three weeks, I'm going to be all over the East Coast. I'm going to be in New York for next week. I'm going to be in D.C. checking out all the great cocktail bars out there. But um, I will be coming around, back around August 11th or 12th, I believe. Um, I'm probably going to be going back to Barrio Food and Drink. I don't know. Honestly, I'm trying to, um, I'm looking for options right now for basically I'm starting a consulting business. So if anybody in Tucson would like to really get their cocktail program going, I am there for business. Um, me and my head bartender who works with me at Barrio Food and Drink. Um, his name's um, Patrick O'Brien. He is the next best person in Tucson. If you want to drink while I'm gone, head on down to Barrio because he'll make you an excellent drink. Who knew we were so rich in our community? And by the way, just one minor correction, not to correct my guests, but we have a cocktail scene. This is a little underground. You need to know where to look. You need to know who to ask and what to ask for. And it is changing. There's a terrific program, I think, at the Hotel Congress. And I love what they did up at Lowe's this year with 30 Days of Classic Cocktails. And I don't know if you got a chance to see that menu, but it's worth checking out. I'll, I'll take you up there, and, and we'll go have a great drink to celebrate. I'll know the best drinks are probably at your house and my house. Can I just say how enormously proud we are of you? This is a big deal, and you've done a really good job. You've totally earned this, and I am so proud because you can work without a lot of recognition in Tucson. And it's hard to know that you're the best at what you do in the country, but you are. And I'm glad they came and found you and discovered and saw in you this enormous talent. And we are very, very pleased and proud to have been in the room last night when you were honored. And we can't wait to go home. I mean, okay, so they won't be doing a ticker tape parade like they do for Wildcats when they come home from Final Four. But it'll be the next best thing. I can't wait to have clink glasses with you when we get home. Oh, definitely. I can't wait for that. And you're all right. There is... Uh yeah, definitely. Congress is an excellent place. Their head bartender, Aaron, over there is really struggling to uh, get a good cocktail program going over there. So definitely check him as like, oh, excellent drinks. He's got the mix going every Monday for anybody in the industry. Uh, great guy down there. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just waiting to come home and to get behind the bar. I really want to get behind my bar again. I'm feeling homesick. So, yeah. Well, cheers. Very proud of you. Congratulations. Thanks for stopping by. Of course. He's the most adorable young man. I can't tell you. I just want to... Let's describe it. He's got this great red hair, so I have to tell you all about it. All right. So here we are in New Orleans, Louisiana. When I come to New Orleans, there's a gal who uh, does a little bit of what I do in Tucson in New Orleans. She has a TV thing on the ABC affiliate. She has a radio thing. I have. <laughs> well, and... I have now. You have now. And we've also got to talk about the fact that you've got multiple TV gigs going on. You've become like... I mean, you're like Mrs. Food TV in New Orleans these days. <laughs> oh, well, that's pretty bold. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it very much. I'm working on ABC. I've done a lot of local PBS television, and I am Lauren Godin. You are Lauren Godin, the food goddess, my <laughs> cocktail sister, and this is actually a chance for us to work together as the cocktail sisters, which is a, a dream that I have, and I hope that we're going to get to do a lot more. We're here wrapping up. It's last call. Talk a little bit about Tales 2009. Having been to as many of these as a New Orleans native is, you've been here from the beginning. Almost every year presenting, almost every year emceeing, moderating. I mean, you are in up to your ears in this thing. Talk a little bit about how this year has shaped up. This year has been spectacular in so many ways. Uh, very dynamic. A lot of amazing seminars. But, of course, that means it's because it's populated by such incredible people like Kieran, who was just here. And you have the Robert Hesses of the world and the Ted Hayes and the Dale LaGroffs. And 
it only can be phenomenal. So how is it uh, wrapped up? It's been just a blast in a glass every single solitary day from the tasting rooms and to the seminars to the dinners to the lunches and all points in between very successful for the city a big big hit for the city the hotel is fantastic you talk about hotel bars and we're sitting here at the carousel bar in the hotel Monteleone watching people actually spin uh, and make a full revolution I mean it's a live working carousel bar and uh, New Orleans like Tucson is just sort of uncovering its cocktail mojo too. We've always flung drinks. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I, I wanted to make a very specific point here, which was even though Tales of the Cocktail comes here, yeah. because the history of the cocktail, arguably America's greatest gift to world culture, is the invention, the American invention of the cocktail in 1806. We come back to New Orleans because this was, in fact, where the cocktail was invented. So it is believed. I mean, there are people who might say otherwise. We lay claim to it because we love it. We want to say so. And there, but there are historians who, who, who would have definitely debate that issue with us. But I will say this to you. New Orleans has always been very well known for being a spirited city in many, many ways. But the whole cocktail culture, as we're doing it now, that artisanal, that handcrafting, that, rather like Tucson, is in its uh, evolutionary stages. But we've really, once we latch onto something here, well, first of all, we don't let go, uh, as is evidenced by our recovery following the hurricane 2005. And you can see, as time goes on, more hotel bars with very, very top-notch bar chefs, mixologists, whatever name you want to give them. A lot of them still want to be called bartenders because that's exactly what they do is tend the bar. Because, because it's yeah, real, exactly. and it's keeping it real, saying bartender, and New Orleans is still keeping it real city. But I want to be real specific. Tales of the Cocktail is not just a week-long symposium about New Orleans cocktails. It is about the entire global industry, which is now evolving in its own right. We've all woken up. It's like we've all put our Hershey bars aside and decided to eat better chocolate. We're really going in a direction. I don't know how you can ever go back. Talk a little bit from your perspective about how the industry moved forward this year at this Tales of the Cocktail. Well, from New Orleans' perspective, it moves forward because people are really getting into this whole idea. It's not just, we all knew the farm to glass mentality, you know, it's best to use the fresh herbs, it's best to juice everything. But now we've just taken that one, we just keep building on that, almost like layering the flavors like you do in a cocktail itself or like you do in a dish. And this year, I think what we're adding more to it is that historic like going back to our mother recipes, much the way the classical French cuisine has mother sauces and mother recipes, we're taking a look now and we're saying, okay, so some of these wacky drinks with pop rocks and God knows what is in it, okay, that's interesting, fun, and different. But what really is of that great cocktail about it? Taking the classic and, to, to quote Paula Abdul, making it your own and doing something very special with it. And I think that's what this year has been mostly about. And it showed us all how deep the people who are really studying this and, and the people who really pay a lot of attention and whose lives this is. There is so much to report from this year's Tales of the Cocktail. We have found some extraordinary products. We've seen some extraordinary things. And as the bar spins, Beach Bum Jeff Berry yep, is yep. here. Yep, he's talking to John Mayer. He's talking to John Mayer. He's here. We, we've got Tony Abuganum at the bar. Hang on one second. We're going to have the guys from Fentiman's up next. We found some products that we love. No, come on over, you guys. And we're going to be back with more. We're going to take a very quick break from Tales of the Cocktails 2009. I'm Jennifer English with my co-host, my cocktail sister, Lauren Godin. Yum. And I, I have to say the one thing, and I'm going to ask you to do this. I love you, too, and I'm so happy to work with you every year. This is so fun. So I found this thing. It's called a Cajun in my pocket. <laughs> yes. And it goes, oh, Ooh, yeah. we I guarantee. Yeah, that's what it says. Anyway, I'm going to ask you to I love you like a pig loves slop, baby. <laughs> And with that, we're going to take a very quick break. I love this woman. It is so fun to do this show with her. Tony Ambuganum is sitting in his bar stool as it spins by in the zebra chair. i got to tell you what. If you love the world of cocktails, if you've traveled anywhere in the world in the last year, and you've had a great drink somewhere, the people you have to thank for that, aside from that mixologist that made it, who may well be here today, 
the people that are influencers here, these are the people who are making this industry happen. They're the people we have to thank for making a great drink possible. But up next, we found something that knocked my socks off. Okay, they've got a full range of products, but they have a cola called Curiosity Cola that when I tell you about this, you're going to say, where can I get it? Well, we're going to work on where you can get it because it is coming soon. But right now, you're listening to the Food & Wine Radio Network on AM 1030. KBOI The Voice, and throughout the World Wide Web on KBOI.com. We'll be back with more right after this.